of during the time of the riots. We're live on YouTube too. Okay. Well, I'm not gonna start to host Bill over. YouTube, welcome to the show. What's Two up? Mine. Yeah, Mark Mark Garland. Garland. Heine Himes on the phone. See live yeah. in the mm -hmm. studio. Oh, they can hear it. They, okay. they, it's loud. Okay. You know, I'm sure they can hear it. Uh, uh, welcome to the show, Mark. What's up? What's up? Top of the evening to you. Top of the evening to you, sir. Oh, what, what, time is it back, what time is it back there, anyway? It's six. About quarter after six. Oh, you got you still got time to make happy hour. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're making it here as we go. We're yeah, yeah, making it, it here as we go. Every hour is a happy hour. We bring happy hour to the ground, show. It's a happy day. Exactly. Right. Exactly. Well, I just people didn't wake up today. You know it. And that's by design. That is by design they did not wake up. For the most part. Some could be bad lifestyle choices. Yeah, could be. You know, I mean, I'm a basically the house resident conspiracy theorist. Uh, I do believe in uh, government um, intervening in human natural evolution. I don't believe in human evolution. We did not evolve from monkeys. We were created by a divine God. But, you know, we do have an element in our society, in our humanity, that wants to eradicate the vast majority of us. And I don't hear anyone saying I'm wrong. So that's what it is. <laughs> so uh, why should why should they share their toys? Uh, uh, well, yeah, it's been said the government doesn't like uh, thievery because they hate competition. Well, but the people are the government. Yep. Yep. We sh we are because we in the live democracy, in, the in the democracy. The people get the government they deserve. But we are not a democracy. We are a republic. We are more of a constitutional republic. Yes. That's what we should be. And the constitution should be protecting us all. No, because you're not included. The constitution was written for rich white men. There it is. we? You speak in French or you pregnant? What's this we? We, we, monsieur. No, I'm speaking out of ignorance because that's all that most of us, especially in the rural area, that's all we had. You know, that we had the old racist-ass motherfucker teaching us civics, American history. Uh, we grow up with people around us who basically have no true love for us, and, and they would never share any real information about ourselves. That's why we rely on people like you, people like Dick Gregory, people with the actual academics that could actually bring us the knowledge that we need to know self and up, uplift ourselves. Well, a good book to start with for those who want to know how things work in this country. There's a book called Tragedy and Hope. Have you ever heard of it? No, sir. What's the author's <laughs> name? What's the Carol name? Quigley. Say that again. Carol, Carol Quigley. Quigley with a Q? That's correct. Okay. He was Bill Clinton's mentor at Georgetown University. Oh, okay. So we got that. I'm going to make sure I start there. So I got a question. With this, well, before we, before you go to your question, just to give you an idea of what I'm talking about and how politics really operates in this country, when Bill Clinton accepted the nomination for president, he said, "I want to take this opportunity to thank my mentor, Carol Quigley." So I'm just going to read a couple sentences here to you what Carol Quigley said: "The chief problem of American political life for a long time." has been how to make the two congressional parties more national and international. The argument that the two parties should represent opposed ideals and policies, one perhaps of the right and the other of the left, is a foolish idea acceptable only to doctrinaire and academic thinkers. Instead, the two parties should be almost identical so that the American people and throw the rascals out of any election without leading to any profound or extensive shift in policy. There it is. Wow. Mm. That's what we were I see that about right now. before the show. We I were see, talking about Obama, yeah. how he didn't really change the, the playbook that Bush Jr. had. Or President well, I see Bush exactly had. what he said right now. There really is no, I see no difference from neither party. Mm -hmm. They are, they're basically identical. Yeah, like, they're two different, different wings on the same foul bird. Mm -hmm. You know, we really shouldn't have political parties in this country. We really shouldn't. They're they're anti-American. Me personally, not trying I don't, to sound like a job right. Venture. Me me personally, I don't think that uh, going through the political system 
the and through this current system, now it's going to work. I'm more thinking that it's the pitchforks are probably going to be needed. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's to, more of a, it's to also, even even to even be able to p install something that even to to what we say is supposed to be to actually be able to participate in something like that. Well, no matter who we elect, it, it, like it, it ain't this. changing. A, a not, system not cannot changing. fail you if it was never designed for you. That's what I'm saying. You, know? you think that? But you, I'm also believing we're not that. going to be able to uh, change anything through this going through this current. Way of doing it, it's it's not gonna. They're gonna. It's gonna. It's rigged. We all we all know this. It's always like the you yeah. know what I'm saying the people are fooled because it's an illusion. It doesn't it doesn't exist. You know, like Trump was already picked by the powers that be because to, Trump is to, in to the bloodline. Trump is a part of the blood. He's family of the powers that be. Mm. You know, we always well, say Hillary about, Clinton and Donald Trump are related by blood, so it wouldn't matter, would it? No, it no, would not. No. Just like Obama. And um, Cheney, uh, or, or, and Dick Cheney and Bush, we're all, you know, this all, this all, you know, when you really get into it, 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 you get so deep, you start becoming a defeatist. You start becoming a defeatist because you see that this too damn strong, it's too powerful. So what and you I know, give it only a 50-50 chance that Megan's going to marry into the royal family. The black chick, or... Well, sort of black. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so they they saying some racist things about her. Well, Henry, or uh, that boy, the the redhead, a few years ago, you know, after nine eleven, he dressed up as a Nazi yeah. for Halloween. There you go. There it is, right there. Hey, wow. Hey, what do I know? There it is. Right. I, I, I was about ready to literally say that this man says exactly what, yes, and that's it. and he's gonna marry this little chocolate bunny. Are you out your mind? You know that the, the the queen of Eng England. All right. He just playing. He just playing. That's just no, a little toy for thinks, him right now. Everybody thinks Donald Trump. All these people are rich. The Queen of England is the richest person in the world. This bitch is making so much money every day on all the different. She owns all Canada. She owns all Australia. Any part of it. Then what you guys? What you guys should look up is uh, an operation called the Paradise Papers. The Paradise Papers. Mm-hmm. And then you'll see where she hides her money in offshore accounts. Mm. Yeah, yeah. This is why I was talking about being a defeatist. Once you Another start... one is the Panama Papers. Now, I will tell you, one of the female journalists who I had a lot of respect like for, and she's the one that uncovered the Panama Papers, she was killed on the, on the island of Malta a couple months ago. What was her name again? Oh, I can't even remember her name right now, but what I will tell you, so far this year, there's been something like 62 journalists killed around the world who have been trying to share the truth. Mm. Wow. Then that's another nail in the defeatist coffin. I'm telling you, man, this thing has defeatist to be... Defeatist my ass, dude, listen. I have been warning people about this for years. I've had, I've had attempts on my life before. Yeah, you can't even think about that stuff. No, that's if why. You're not, I, hey, if you're not, if you're not willing to die for the cause, then you shouldn't even get into the race. Cause dude, no, that's the exactly. Time. exactly. Yeah. And that's why we're here tonight, doing what we do. It's Friday, you know. December the 29th, two thousand seventeen, the year of our Lord. <laughs> and that's where we're at. And this is what we're doing. You know, I want this show to be the long term game. You know. It's about the long term. It can't be a short term thing. You know, we might not see the fruits of us, but this is the oh, seed. This no, is no, the no, digging no, of the no, hole, no. sowing the seed, and watching it grow. You right. know, that's where I'm at. And we have to give up our lives, and we have to give up our lives. But it's better and to and die. Ho and hopefully, hopefully Mont Monsanto and Bear Aspen won't control those seeds. Oh, <laughs> damn. Right damn. Now. <laughs> <laughs> they already probably got it. You only gonna get one shot, guys. Yep. Just one shot. The shit ain't growing next year. Mm -mm. Yeah. yeah. So, Mister uh, Anaheim, I have a question for you, sir. I'm uh, yes, sir. I'm Cobra Immortal. I'm a rapper, singer, actor, and a recording artist from Crystal City, Missouri. And um, my question to you is, sir, with all the things that's going on politically and world events, where do you see us heading within the next? few years for us in our country well back in 2012 in April of 2012 I told folks that Barack Obama would be a reelected 
And the reason he would be reelected is because he's doing everything Wall Street wanted him to do. Mm-hmm. Also, if anybody's a true historian and studies the Weimar Republic, everything this country's doing right now is what was going on in the Weimar Republic before Hitler was democratically elected. On that show in April 2012, I told the listeners, if not by 2016, by 2020, we would have a dictator in the White House. Now, what is everybody calling Trump these days? A dictator. Yeah. Even the former CIA director is calling him a dictator. Well, look how many generals the guy's putting in, in positions of power. It's pretty obvious if you see, you know, almost everybody is some sort of military tactician. Why? Why? Well, those particular people he put in power, you have to go back and go deeper than that. The generals he put in power are the very generals who got fired or were forced to resign under the Obama administration. So what does that tell you? That they were a part of that coup. Oh, you know about the coup? Well, (laughs) Petraeus. Yeah. Uh, Yeah, so what I'm saying to you is you have a very um, strong group of people within the Muslim world that are pushing for an all-out caliphate. Meanwhile, in the Western world, you have people who have hijacked the so-called Christian movement, and they're pushing for an all-out caliphate. Yep. Mm-hmm. So they think by now, messing with this embassy from Tel Aviv to Jerusalem will help ramp it up, because with this all-out caliphate, that's supposed to bring back the, the re-emergence of the Messiah. Right. But, but as you know... Before the Messiah returns, there will be the false prophets. Right, right. And they've already and they've already got the technology today where they can use a uh, holographic image, and I can see a bunch of people moving, driving moving. one night on the highway and seeing that white Jesus that they always show you in those damn but. last disciple paintings, mm-hmm. as if it's some sign that Jesus is returning. By the way, I have a question for you, gentlemen. You know who that Jesus is in those paintings, right? He was a pedophile model. What was his name? Peter Borgia? Or, um, he was a... Who, who did the painting of The Last Supper? Uh, what did Michelangelo was on? Uh, the, da Vinci. Vinci. the Da Vinci. And all that guy was... All, all those people in that painting were friends and relatives of Da Vinci. Man. And yet people now act like they know what Jesus Christ looks like. Right. I often say, how the hell could you grow up in a desert and not have so much as a suntan. Well, if you go to the Vatican, on the wall in the Vatican, you will see a black Madonna yes. holding a black Jesus. Yes. Back in the old church, they, they recognized the truth, but that don't go along with the white supremacy program. You know, it, 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 that's a, dare I say, a, a thorn in its side. You know, the reality of a melanated Messiah. You know, so there it is. Or Adam and Eve. Adam and Eve, we all know, genetically cannot have blue eyes, blonde hair, and pale skin. Mm-hmm. If that's the case, well, the my brother. Tells you, the Bible tells you Jesus Christ had hair like the, lamb, um, the, the, the wool of a lamb. So yeah. I mean, you know. That's called nappy for you uneducated yeah. out there. That's why I don't comb my hair. I don't cut it and I don't comb it. You shouldn't. Why are you going to try to fix okay. something the Creator made? Just to appease these people who hate your guts anyways. So to finish the question... In regards to where we headed, there's going to be a lot of gnashing of the teeth. There's no accident that you've been watching all these dystopian movies like Handmaid's Tale and Hunger uh, Games. Hunger Game because yeah. they're letting you know we're, we're headed for a civil war. And it's going to be a racial goes, civil war? Yeah, but, well, they always try to get it started with a racial image, but it's not going to be racial because... It's too many poor what's white the, people. What's the, what, what's the percentage of white folks in this country? Like seventy, no, it's like sixty something percent. It's like about sixty. Well, right now it's like seventy-one percent of the U.S. population is white. Now they talk about how the Muslims are coming here and taking over. What percentage of the U.S. population is Muslim? Shit, probably four to six. One. Yeah, it's not even that high. Damn. But see, this is the paranoia and the the fear they put in the hearts of so many white folks that they don't even know the truth. So they really believe that. Mexicans are taking over the country, and Muslims are the biggest threat. Yep. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah. how come it's not getting some of that, you know, fire off our backs? You know, they still like to kick us in that fucking ass when they get a chance. Because we, if you look at 
all these movies, like The Matrix and all these movies, who's the person that's always that end up being the person of salvation? A black person, where it'd be a female. There you go. Yeah, just like that. There you go. How they did it in uh, the book of Eli with uh, Denzel Washington. Yeah. Yeah. Well, this is how they did with goddamn rock and roll, rap, everything we come up with. Fucking they'll come in, you know, they'll send a little Jew boy in there, he'll finance a couple of things, break up the original group, right. and then they'll put a white boy in there to, to run off with it. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, you said earlier about suntan. Nobody had a suntan. Why would they need a suntan? Why, why would they even go for a suntan? Who are they trying to emulate? The melanated, the, the original people. The original. All in the lip. Yep, original people. So, there's always been the take. I don't know if you ever saw the movie Schindler's List. Yes. yes. Well, the great thing about Schindler's List is a scene in the movie where this camp commander hates himself. Why does he hate himself? Because he's in love with the Jewish girl that's in the camp. Right. And that's what you're dealing with. You're dealing with a lot of folks. They love us. But they and hate they it. hate themselves for loving us. Yep. Mm-hmm. Damn. Yeah, that's deep. So when you look at things like Roy Moore, for example, evangelicals teach their people to have their daughters at an early age date and marry older men. Mm -hmm. Because in the old days, when there was slavery, who was the slave owner raping? <laughs> the young kids, the black women, the black women there slaves. You go. Yeah. Before you could get married, your slave owner sex had sex with your wife before you got married to her. Mm -hmm. Even why you was married to her, if you wanted yeah. to, and you too, if he was a perverted. Yeah. Fucking so, man. so when slavery ended, and now you got all these so-called freed blacks, they had to come up with the Ku Klux Klan because they were afraid now that these black guys were going to do the white women mm. what they've been doing to us. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right. So, so it's no big deal about these guys marrying 12, 13, 14 year old girls because in their mind, they are dating those girls before some black guy destroys their virginity. Mm. Right. So, so mm. in that case, it's only considered. So, so while people are sitting here talking about Harvey Weinstein, what is Harvey Weinstein doing that the Mormon Church doesn't do? Damn. Polygamy. Yeah. Well, no, he's not fucking multiple. Look at that. Right. Not just polygamy. Look at the age of married. the girls involved in that polygamy. You know, they always young. Yeah. You know, but don't forget the the prophet Doug Toby, brother Dimebag, that little fourteen year old girl. She's gonna be mine. That's but why. The thing, but the thing about young. it is, is I don't like I don't like how they. The only time they consider it rape is if a black man. Uh, does it? Uh, did you? I know you guys are young, but do you remember the TV show Beverly Hillbillies? Yes, yes. I remember it. <coughs> Who was, the, who was the blonde girl on the show? Ellie Mae Clampett. Mm -hmm. And she was considered an old maid because she was already 18 years old and not already married. Damn, that's, yeah. Man. Yeah, that's deep, yeah. Mm -hmm. Go back and look at all the Western movies. Who, who, who's still alive today that was so popular in the Western movies? And he, he came out so against Obama during the real Clint Eastwood. Clint Eastwood. Yeah. Go back and look at Clint Eastwood movies and see the girls who were 14 years old in the movie who said, well, my mom got married at 14. I ain't too young. Wow. Mm. wow. In fact, he was in one movie where he was a civil, in the Civil War, and they ended up poisoning his ass because there were three women down in the South, and they were all fighting over him. One was like 14, the other one was 17, and then the mom. and They were all fighting over Clint Eastwood. Yeah. Wow. So, you know, and I'll just say this to you. This country is What's very... You? Schizophrenic. What's the name of it? Name me one country, name me one state in this country right now where a fourteen-year-old girl can't get married. With a pair of consent, I can't think of any. Doesn't matter. What I'm saying is, so there is not one single state in this country right now where a fourteen-year-old girl can't get married. And up in the New England area, there's one state where you can get married at twelve. Wow. Let me guess, is that Alabama? No, New England. This is in the New, New England. England. Oh, okay, yeah, it's in New England. The South. No, no. See, this so is a, he's saying this is a cultural, a Caucasoid cultural right. thing. Right. So when you look, so when you look at a country that any state a fourteen-year-old girl can get married in, what the hell are they talking about? They're talking about fucking some damn kids. That's what the fuck they're talking about. Yeah. Legally. What was the thing? Why they get away young? Bleed, she's old enough to breed. No there God. you go. There it is. Wow. And, and, I don't get the, if, if, and if you look at the TV show Game of Thrones, the biggest 
favorite God. girl of all was, oh, my God, I'm going to have my period soon. And once she has her period, he's going to take her. Uh-huh. Mm. And so that basically means, like, when she does that, that she's ready to. Yeah, she's a woman. She, she's uh, ready to do the thing. Yeah. So and this is handed down like, from Greek and Roman culture. So we live in a schizophrenic world because on the one hand, while they'll sit there and call you a pervert, call you a pedophile, the fact remains a 14-year-old girl can get married in any state in this country. Now, it might, be, it might require the parental permission. It might right. require the permission of a judge. But the fact is, she can still get married. And still do that. And they'll allow her to do it, too. And just to show you how really schizophrenic they are, there was a guy in Florida who married his girlfriend. They were both underage. They both had permission of their parents. And then he got arrested on their wedding night for having sex with her. Because even though they were married, <laughs> it was still illegal for him to have sex with her. That's how schizophrenic we are. Mm-hmm. Wow. And that comes from the evilness that is controlling us. So they're basically, so I guess what they is, is they said that Roy Moore supposedly passed the polygraph test. <laughs> you might say the evilness, but when I look at racism, when I look at racism, when I look at misogyny, I consider those mental illness. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right. And and, schiz- and schizophrenia is a mental illness. So you take all these folks. The folks, the folks on the right, far right, who talk the most about gays are the same ones you catch later on coming out of some gay bathhouse. Yeah. <laughs> you know, they always, they be the main, they do that because they feel guilt of the stuff that they doing. So yeah. I'm going to give you guys a little, I'm going to give you a little political trivia test here. Who was it that repealed Don't Ask, Don't Tell in the U.S. military? Obama. Nope. Clinton. Bush. It was... The log cabin boys. You ever heard of the log cabin boys? Oh, yeah, the Republicans that were homosexual. There you go. What happened was, during the Bush years, the log cabin boys... W or H.W.? Uh, no, this is under W. Bush. George okay. W. Under George W. Bush, the log cabin boys filed a lawsuit to repeal Don't Ask, Don't Tell. But the law didn't go into effect until Obama was in the White House. So okay. everybody thinks Obama's the one who did it. Oh, so Obama didn't sign that law. No, he did it, son. He did sign it. He didn't have no choice. The Supreme Court had already ruled on it. So Obama had nothing really to do with it. The only thing Obama could do was set up a panel. Right, but I'm saying, did, did W. Bush sign that bill or did Obama sign it? It wasn't a bill. It what? was ruled on by the U.S. Okay. Supreme Court. Okay, so Obama just had to enforce it. Yeah. Yeah, he just so what I'm telling it. you is, while everybody, just like on your okay. show right now, the first word that came out was Obama, Obama wasn't the one who did it. Right. So we're, we're, but people in this country are misled so much, they believe Obama's the one who repealed Don't Ask, Don't Tell. It was a bunch of white boys in the Republican Party from the law cabin group that had that law repealed. And okay. we also believe so, that so, Bush's daddy was a racist. So, the, so okay, so the, uh, the Don't Ask, don't, don't Tell, that was a Supreme Court ruling. Yes. Okay. So Obama had no choice. Right. So yeah. As the chief, a, yeah, yeah, as the chief law enforcement officer in the country, yeah, he just enforced it. Okay. Mm-hmm. See, they see, I didn't, I didn't know that. Mm-hmm. Of course, you didn't know that because you misled. And, right. <laughs> That's but, what I'm telling you. But Mark, as a Marine Corps major, do you not yeah. see the subversiveness of letting a bunch of limp wrist fags in the dorms during basic boot, AIT, all the fucking training? Do you not see how subversive and, and, and as a man, I don't even want my boy, my my young boy, to go to the military. Now I come from a huge military fucking family. So you want to you know my you want to know my response to that? Yeah, as a Marine Corps retired major, as a man yeah. in the uniform. And, 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 and by the way, an infantry officer, by the way. Yes, sir. Would you like to know my response to that? Yes, sir. Why the fuck should I go die on a battlefield while the fighters can get away with not having to go? Hmm. Damn. See, this is how you're being trained to believe that way. If I if I can go on a battlefield or die, then they should be out there just like I am. Mm-hmm. Right, right. I, yeah. yeah. Damn. So that's why. That's why. Yeah. Yeah. What you're doing is giving them a pass. You're giving them a pass to be back here and do what they want. Well, I'm getting my ass killed. Right. Damn. 
Yeah. And that's one of the that's one of the agendas of Good the point. of the new world order is to promote. See, that's psychological warfare right there, brother. But see, I was trained by them, so I know how they think and I know how they manipulate us. And the see, so what they purposely do is get you to hate the gays when the gays have been around all along. Right. Right. Like if George Washington and them. Where the only difference was in the past you didn't know they were gay. Right. Right. So I ask you seriously, have you ever gone to a gay bathhouse? No. 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 Then I guess you've never been in a fucking public pool, have you? Oh. That's one of that's one of the that's one of the agendas of the New World Order is to promote same sex marriage. For population purposes. And and in the military too. Yeah. I don't know. So I it like doesn't have to be an agenda. Let me explain. Have you all ever seen the movie that came out? Back in the 80s, where everybody had to serve in the military to become a citizen. Oh, was it like Starship first? Trooper? There you go. Didn't you see women and men all taking showers? Yes, together? I remember that scene. They always tell you what they have planned for you. Damn, yeah. Mm. I'll give you a better one. So now the brother tell everybody I'm an LAPD retired sergeant. What's the all-time most well-known... Alien UFO TV show movie. Oh, I didn't catch all of that. Was it like uh, V? Back in the eighties? Hell no, not even close. Repeat the that again. Back in the sixties. Oh, back in the sixties. Mm-hmm. Well, it's still around. World of Warcraft. It, but it's been around since oh, the 60s. Star Trek. Okay, so let me ask you: Who created Star Trek? Gene Roddenberry. Did you know he was an LAPD sergeant? I knew he was a Scientologist, but no. Did you know he was an LAPD sergeant? No. I had no clue he was in law enforcement. Well, I'll give you one better than that. Who is the guy that they considered back in the old Star Trek to be their all-time favorite personality on Star Trek? Wasn't it, uh... Oh, my God. The, uh, the little Asian guy? George Takei? Take- George Hell Take- no. Mm. Oh. You're speaking of games, but no. <laughs> <laughs> I, I didn't watch Star Trek. So no, uh, Star. probably Dr. Spock, or Mr. Spock. There you go. Little Mr. Nimoy. Spock. Mm, Leonard Nimoy. Leonard you know Nimoy. Do you know who Mr. Spock really is? Leonard Nimoy, his real name. My- Mr. Spock is LAPD Chief William H. Parker. When, Je- when Gene Roddenberry created that show, he took the personality from the LAPD Chief and made that character Mr. Spock. Mm. In fact, Gene Roddenberry was a World War II pilot in the Air Force. He was a distinguished flying cross recipient. That guy was a hero in World War II. But wow. most people don't even know that Gene Roddenberry, who created Star Trek, that tells you all the stuff you saw on Star Trek in the 60s, we're doing it now. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, Scotty, came, beam me up. I came from an LAPD sergeant. Well, well, who was his plug? Or, or how did he? how was he able to achieve that? Was he in an organization, or or what? Well, if he was a pilot in the Air Force, what organization do you think he was a member of? Because, see, you guys don't talk about this, but what are all these guys a member of? John Burke Society? Uh, not all of them, but they all are a member of one little clique. Probably some perv clique. Let's go back to Jesus Christ. What was Jesus Christ's father? A carpenter. A mason. Son of a bitch. There you go. Dude. How oh, old damn. was Jesus Christ when he died? 33. 33 degrees. And a third. Damn. <laughs> damn. Yeah. Even on, in the book. Ain't, 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 ain't Shaquille O'Neal a 33? 33. 33 uh, yeah, mason? he's a black mason. Don't really matter. They don't got no secrets. Well, what's funny about black masons is... <laughs> they don't. No, I'm serious. you got a lot of blacks in this country today demanding reparations, right? Mm-hmm. To be a free and accepted mason, that means you cannot be a descendant of a slave. So how the hell can you be a mason and be demanding reparations? Mm, shit. See, when I tell black folks that, they get that feeling, sir, because they don't even realize that. White well, don't take much to do that. Black, black, well, white races don't even recognize most black masons because they're not free and accepted masons because they're descendants of slaves. To be right. a, a free and accepted mason, you cannot be a descendant of a slave. Now, I will tell you this. 
I go even a little further, and I hurt the feelings of a lot of white nations. Because you know who was a slave long before Africans were? They were. What holiday do we celebrate that the Irish just love? St. Patrick's Day. St. Patrick was a slave because before blacks were niggas in this country, the Irish were called the niggas. Mm -hmm. The Irish were called the monkeys. Damn. Mm -hmm. I'm serious. And they, yeah, they I, I, you guys, I since you're high that. tech, since you're high tech, I challenge anybody listening to this show to just Google Irish were the monkeys and see what you come up with. <laughs> a leprechaun in a tree eating a banana. That's fine. Well, you laugh, but when you hear the word gorilla, what do you think? What's the first thing that comes to your mind when you hear the word gorilla? Black man. I'm pointing because of Google's fucking algorithm. But unfortunately, you I think, think of that movie, movie Congo. Do you think of Congo? Well, I think of King Kong. The, ori <laughs> the original definition for gorilla means a tribe of hairy African women. But African black people really ain't that hairy. That's what I don't get. I know that, but I'm just telling you, they that's how they, when, well, when well, Europeans well, went well, to another part well, of the well, world, they didn't know what to call people. So they called black folks gorilla. Mm. When you hear the word orangutan, you know where that word comes from? Those were the black people over in the country of Malay, M-A-L-A-Y. That's the original definition of orangutan, a wild man in Malay. So when you hear these words, and people use these words every day, they don't even know what the original definition is. See, I was taught the Queen's English. I was taught by them, so I know what these words mean. And I, I'll give you a better one. You hear the word thug. Because they love to yes. use the term thug when it comes to a black criminal. No black man of conscience should ever use the word thug. Mm -hmm. Because we're not a because, thug. Mm -mm. Because, you, it's, no, it's, re it's referring to black people as gorillas. You know, you know who the all-time famous thug was? King Kong. Yeah. And in King Kong, what do you see? The black, black hairy ape who wants to have sex with the blonde, mm -hmm. blue-eyed yeah, white girl. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Faye Ray, that was the actress in the original King Kong. So just a few years ago, in a very popular magazine, here's his brother in the NBA, and they do a photograph of him with this white girl, and it looks just like the damn poster from the King Kong movie no. back in the early 1900s. Wow. Now, in this day and age. And this, this, this shit is, is what not I stopping. Do. I, run, I, run a, I run a site on Facebook called Sepia Legacy. His story... Could you spell that for the uh, people out there that might be listening want to write this down? Well, before there was, before Ebony Magazine, the best magazine of all was Sepia. Sepia, S-E-P-I-A. And so in honor of that magazine, I run a Facebook site called Sepia Legacy. His story, not his, I said history, not his story. Right. And this is the kind of information I share. So, brother... Since you and I have been in touch, what I want to do, I will send you the email, uh, in the email, the Facebook site that I run, where I share history that I'm sharing right now that you won't find anywhere else. Good, good, good. And good. you don't know, but you know what the sad now thing is? The vast majority of people <coughs> who follow me on those Facebook sites, guess what ethnicity they are? Very white. There it is. Because we don't even want to know our own history. Mm -hmm. Because right. once we know the truth, the truth makes you or compels you to act. It's so easy to sit around and talk well, shit. Well, see, I'm going to put the brother on the spot here. So, brother, you remember we had this telephonic conversation earlier this week? Yes, on Christmas Day. Now, well, let me tell you what you did on Christmas Day. I told you that a lot of people want me to pick up the mantle and take over now that Dick Gregory has passed away. Right. And I told you that wasn't my mission. And, I, and you asked me, what was my mission? I said, well, these days, I coach female servants. You know what your response was? Mm. I've been drinking. You started laughing like, what, a nigga? Servant, what? <laughs> <laughs> and yet most people in this world don't even know the first surfers on the planet were black because most of the waves and warm ocean waters are in Africa. Damn. Yeah, that's what... Uh... Europeans couldn't surf. The waters in Europe are freezing. They didn't come out with wetsuits till the 1950s, so damn sure we're surfing in Europe. That's what brother, rest in peace to brother Dick Gregory, because see, I watched the show with him on 
uh, the Breakfast Club, and he was talking about how the hurricanes start from Africa. Africa. But he was talking about a metaphysical thing because of the power of the black woman putting that energy, or black people putting that energy because you're wrong. It goes, hits the Caribbean, and it dies up there in Canada because Canada didn't Well, the hurricanes slaves. follow the patterns of the, the slaves that are on the bottom of the Atlantic Ocean. Mm. Mm -hmm. And um, I'll give you another one. I was, I've been featured in Professional Bull Rider magazine. I'm very famous in the honky-tonk community. Now, when I walk into a honky-tonk, I'm usually the only one. Yeah. I can white folks don't say shit to me. I got to beat the white girls off with a stick, but white people don't <laughs> say shit. But when I walk out that honky-tonk, you know what dumbass people look at me like I'm crazy because they see me with a cowboy hat on? Black folks. Mm -hmm. Right. Guess who the first black, guess who the first cowboys were? The first cowboys were... And rodeos were blacks and Mexicans. Right. That's why we were working on these white people's ranches. And during the time when they weren't working on the ranches, they started riding the horses and the bulls inside the fucking pen. For That's entertainment. That's from blacks and Mexicans. Mm -hmm. That's why they're not called cow men. They're called cowboys. And, well, maybe, maybe so. But the point is, so once again, well, we don't know. How, so how many gentlemen how many jump are right there right now in the studio? Four. It's four of us. Four. Uh, all right. So I'm going to ask y'all this question. Who is the godmother of the civil rights movement? I would say Rosa Park. Anybody else? I'm, I'm Madam C.J. Walker? I'm not going to say it. I, I Anybody don't, says Rosa Park? I don't know. Because that, that's what you're taught. Yeah. No. My, my babysitter is the godmother of the civil rights movement. Her name is September Clark. She taught rules apart. You said don't even know her. I don't. Name. I don't want to. I mean, because y'all, you said repeat her name again. September Clark. September Clark. Spell the first name. I'm sorry. Spell the first name. S E P, as in Paul. Uh huh. T as in Tom. I M A Clark. Okay. And I bet you never even heard her name before. No, never but I'm going to find out who she is tonight. And let me just tell you this. September Clark is the only person who could slap the shit out of Martin Luther King and get away with it. Mm. And you never heard her name. Everything Rosa Parks did, September Clark is the one who taught her. See, so what I'm saying is when black people, with this new museum up in the Smithsonian Institute, when black folks don't even tell you the real history by black people, so when white folks want to learn our history, and they're learning from black people who are telling you misinformation, mm -hmm. how the hell are we going to know our history? Exactly. Mm -hmm. If you don't know who and you this are. Is what, and this is what I do on my Facebook site. I tell history, not his story. Well, you, In fact, you the only reason fact, Rosa Parks was chosen is it's because Rosa Parks wasn't dark-skinned. They figured she said a less, less chance of getting her ass beat on the bus because she wasn't dark-skinned black. I've heard the only privilege there is in America is light-skinned black folks. They're the ones who can really receive the privilege. Well, let me tell you this, because I knew Rosa Parks. And, of course, like I said, September Clark was my babysitter, so I knew her. My children are, are Blexican. Do you know what a Blexican is? Black Mexican. Black and Mexican. There you go. So one Sunday, I'm at church, and I bring my children in, and they met Rosa Parks. I didn't even think about it. I didn't even realize it until we got home. And my wife says, do you realize when we walked in, Rosa Parks stopped talking to all the dark-skinned black children and started talking to your children? Wow. See, we do it to ourselves, and we're programmed that way. And I bet consciously she didn't even realize she did it. And me, I'm right there in the room with her, and consciously I didn't even realize she was doing it. Seriously. That's some crazy. So if you want to end the you want to end the problem with racism, and you four gentlemen are very sharp, how how can you end racism? <laughs> oh, my ways are rather extreme, but I say uh, it's like this: Hitler had the right idea, but he chose the wrong race. The way Do that you know, have you ever seen the movie Bulwark? No. You need to watch Bulwark. See the movie Bulwark with Warren Beatty and and Cheatham. Cheatham's in that movie. 
And um, Halle Berry's in that movie. The woman that plays Halle Berry's grandmother gives you the solution to racism. You know what it is? What is it? Everybody needs to start fucking everybody else, and then you won't have no problem with racism. There you go. Yeah. There you go. I think that plan is starting to or, move along. But also, mm-hmm. you know, I want to also say this. Like Ronald Reagan said, if we have an outside threat, IEA, alien invasion, all of a sudden, boy, you don't, you know, here's an M16. Help me fight these goddamn leverage because they'll kill us off. You know, uh, speaking of which, Mark, <clears throat> in, in your travels, what is your uh, a thought or theory on alien life, you know, whether it be the Star Trek version or a metaphysical version, you know, just heaven and what hell. What do you want to know? I mean, is it real? I mean, are there aliens? Do, do we have I'll to... just say this, okay? Have you guys watched the Matrix movie series? I've yeah. seen all the Matrix. Mm-hmm. Yes. I believe that the Matrix is closer to the reality than most people want to believe. In other words, the very last uh, movie of the Matrix, the guy realizes he's been doing this over and over and over again. And each time he keeps trying to come up with a different solution, but he doesn't. And then they send him back out and they start it all over again. Remember that scene in the last matrix where there's all these TV screens and it shows yeah. him, well, this is what you did the last time. This is what you did the time before that. Mm-hmm. What I'm saying is this. I truly believe that man has destroyed this planet in the past. And that's why sometimes when they do archaeology studies, they find stuff and they're like, how the hell can this technology already be here? Exactly. I believe we get to a certain point, and unfortunately, because we don't know how to get along, we end up destroying the planet with nuclear weapons or whatever, and then it starts all over again. Now, you all have heard the term about the Ice Age, right? Right, right. If we have an all-out nuclear war, that's coming. What's going to happen to the clouds of the, of the Earth? It's going to be a nuclear winter, probably. There you go. So there's no sun will be able to come in for a long, long time. What would that create? A uh, nuclear winter. An ice age. Winter. Yeah. Ice age. And then it'll be detectable go. later on in the so-called background radiation that we always detect with our uh, Geiger meters. You know, they, yeah. that's just natural. That's not natural. That's, like you said, from fucking millions of years ago when we blew this motherfucker up. That's where they, uh, the, uh, the Mexicans have that creation theory where they came out of the cave. That wasn't a cave. That was the bomb shelter those motherfuckers were in when the motherfuckers were destroyed. There's only one group of people on the planet who came from caves. No, well, the Caucasoid? European. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. European. European. And that's why Europeans act the way they do, because, see, Europeans come from a very hostile environment. Mm-hmm. Just like right now, we're celebrating Christmas. Jesus Christ wasn't born in December. He was born in springtime. Why do we celebrate Christmas in December? Because of evil Luciferians that are running this motherfuckers have certain rituals they have to do at the winter solstice to fucking pay homage to their deities. And because that's why. in Europe, when you have a cold climate, mm-hmm. all can't... of a sudden, they thought the sun died on December 20th. And but all of a sudden, on December 21st, which is the longest night of the year, yep. they noticed the following day, the shadow on the ground started getting longer again. So that's the rebirth of the S-U-N, not the S-O-N. Mm-hmm. They're sun worshippers. Yep. Right. I tell my kids all the time, when the winter solstice is coming, and I tell them, start after that day, start looking at the time and how long the, 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 the light is still in the sky. And it's so far at right now, it's like five minutes past five o'clock, and it's still daylight. So we- these Nazis and the Germans come over here with their, tra- their tradition, their, their race. You know, Santa Claus has a red uh, uniform on, right? Right. Mm-hmm. Do you know where that red uniform comes from? Don't have a clue. Coca-Cola refused to use Santa Claus in their ads until they would use the red from the Coca-Cola can in a Santa Claus suit to promote Coca-Cola. Because Coca-Cola used to have cocaine in it. And when they would no longer allow Coca-Cola to have cocaine in it, they had to find out a new way to market it. So all the Santa Claus you see, Santa Claus was not a fat, fat white guy. Santa Claus was this real skinny, decrepit character going back all the way to 10,000 B.C. And at, at Christmas time, we have candy canes, right? Right, right. Do you know what candy canes symbolize? Uh, I would think white 
white power, white and red. The blood dripping off the children of Europe that Santa Claus used to eat. What? I, I'll never lie to you. Ugh. See, we, so we buy into this bullshit. We bring this into Ugh. our culture. So now you cut down a Christmas tree. <laughs> the Bible specifically prohibits cutting down a tree and putting it in your house. Mm. So we buy into this crap. Wait, 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 stop. Uh, Mark, you just said the Bible yeah. says that you're not to cut down a tree and put in your home? Uh, absolutely. Damn, never heard that. Would you, like me to, would you like me to give you the specific reference to where that is? Yes, sir. Well, please, just give me one second to grab my Bible, because I don't want them to... I don't want to misquote the Bible because lightning might hit me in the house there. No, I don't want your seven. haters. No. Dude, and I've, I've researched. you got a hater out there, Mark. This guy's name is a musical musician. Um, you talking about white white key musician? Yeah, this is a hater guy. Just a straight He hates on everybody. It's okay. No, I love it because, see, the brother, let me tell you how that came about. I did a show with Carl Nelson, and somebody brought up Professor Griff. And yeah. I go, well, Alex Jones is a John Burr Society Negro-hating person. Yes. And Professor Griff is one of the few people that comes on Alex Jones' show. So what does that tell you? You don't give a fuck about a nigga either. So when I came on Carl Nelson's show and I exposed Professor Griff for who he really was, one some, of of his goons. Started, some of his followers started attacking Dick Gregory. When Dick Gregory died... They decided to make me the target, and th- so if you go back and look at gotcha. when white white key musicians started doing his YouTube, it was right after Dick Gregory died. Oh shit! Are you there? What happened? What happened? What's that? Oh, okay. Oh, okay. We so, thought we lost. Yeah, we thought we lost. Like the NSA done clicked the button on us or something. But, well, hang on a second, because I'm just um. It it only took me a couple seconds. Let me grab the Bible. Hang on. Okay. I mean, he had hung on for us. We at right. least hang on for him. Yeah, it's yeah. all good. Like, like I said, folks, this is an epic show. You're getting information here that you ain't going to get anywhere else mm-hmm. in a format. You know, there ain't no commercial breaks. You know, uh, Mr. Mark from Anaheim can complete his whole thought. We can talk about anything and everything we will. You know, uh, oh, we just and, and, and next year, man, we're going to get even stronger. We're going to be more people on the show. We're getting more people coming in. It's going to be really? a beautiful thing. Oh yeah, I hate I hate I hate love and I hate love and people and all that stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Just doing a little commercial there. <laughs> well, for you folks who want to know, you Bible scholars, just look in Jeremiah ten, verse two. Jeremiah ten, and verse two. There it is. That's the book oh, of Jeremiah you. for you people that don't know. You know, and you know what? I'm going to say the rhythm and roll. A lot of people always say, you know, research this and that. Don't. Don't waste your time. Listen to us. We will bring you the truth that we are aware of. You know, because a lot of people, let's face it, they ain't going to research shit. They lazy. The only thing they're going to research is another fucking bottle. It's going to take them two days to watch this whole clip. You know it. You know. know? But it's all good. Make sure you watch it. And so what I tell people is, I don't want them to believe anything I tell them. They go do their own homework, and I challenge them to come no. back and say that lie. So I'll read it to you. Don't have me say that. Act yeah. like the people, don't act like the people who make horoscopes and try to read their false and future in the stars. They cut down a tree and carve an idol and decorate it with gold and silver and fasten it securely in place. That's Jeremiah 10. Jeremiah 10-2. You know, Old Testament, you know the one that the evangelicals love to use against <laughs> blacks and women? Oh, yeah. yeah. Because you're a son and of those, shame. And, and, those same, and those same evangelicals have that Christmas tree in their house right now? Yep. Yep. So, I never bought my children a Christmas present. And do you know I was never broke in January? There you go. Most of the retailers make their money in between Thanksgiving yeah, and Christmas. Christmas. Yeah. That's where they make their damn money. You know, and when's the next one coming up? Probably Valentine's Day. Valentine's Day and Easter. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So where do we get Easter from? How is it that we have Easter sometimes in March and sometimes in April? Because mm-hmm. Easter is really about the moon. It's about tracking the moon. It's 
Sometimes it's full in April, sometimes it's full in the other month. It's also a sexual so now, you thing. Know, you know at Christmas time, white folks love to go out and do Christmas caroling, right? Right. Mm -hmm. You do realize in the old days they did that naked. No, I did not. And on Christmas Day, that was the one time where the people who worked for the rich people were allowed to reverse roles with the people they worked for. Okay. And so when you go to the wealthy folks in Europe, they have these big landscapes that have mazes. So they would bring in all these naked women. They would run and hide. And when the guy finds them, he could do whatever he wants. Now, the problem is in the, in the, the winter months, it's too cold. So they remove that practice and they started doing it at Easter. So when you see the Easter bunny, oh, a shit. rabbit symbolizes fertility. Mm-hmm. Uh -huh. You notice how Hugh has to use the bunny for his playmates? Correct. Right, right, yeah. right. right. Yep. So, so, so when you look at Easter, Easter has nothing to do with Jesus Christ or God. It has to do with going out and having sex with prostitutes during the month of March or depending on April. <laughs> <laughs> the I'm, just saying, I'm just telling you what it is. <laughs> this is like if we all three went to a bar. Right. And we saw some bitches over here. We'll I, look at, I, look at Easter, I look at I look at in a totally different way. Yeah. Now. Like, <laughs> right, right. right. It's it's like, like, yeah. Have you ever seen a rabbit lay an egg? No, no. So I mean, if you look at the whole concept of Easter, it makes no absolutely no sense. Hold on, though. There ain't no creature on this earth that procreates like a rabbit, and a rabbit's the only thing that's born with its eyes open. And when you look at the rabbit's eye, you're seeing the full moon. And that ties back to the Easter. But they couldn't stop at April. They couldn't. They couldn't stop at April, so they went on to May. <laughs> what do they do in, on May first? May Day. And on May Day, they have the Maypole, which is nothing but a penis where you wrap all these rope strings around. Yeah. Oh God. So they, they, they <laughs> the when you said that, it, I had a flashback. <laughs> Of, I remember when my kid was in one in, in elementary school, my oldest yep. kid, and yep. like the fourth grader, she was like in the sixth grade, and the fourth graders were rapping that rip, like doing this dance around the pole, rapping the river. Make this stuff and, <laughs> oh my god! And I just look at I'm like, not, we said that that's the first thing that popped in my head. So what you tell me? They were already teaching your four-year-old daughter. No, 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 these were, these were fourth graders. She was in the sixth grade. Oh, I'm sorry. So they were already teaching fourth graders and sixth graders how to go down on a guy. Oh, my oh, God. Like, when you oh, said that, God. rapping that ribbon around, I knew it. I knew And yeah. I seen, it, I seen yeah. that done. I was like, oh, God. No. <laughs> oh, man. So, Mark, how much of this is, like, the Nazi? They don't, hey, they don't stop there. What's on May 5th? Um... May 5th. What is on May 5th? Cinco de Mayo. Oh, man, the fucking a Mexican fucking war victory against the French, if yeah. I'm not mistaken. They got the so independence. Is that, Mexican, is that Mexican Independence Day? Yeah. Well, I... I'm sorry? Like from, I it was, from like some of the messages I talk to is just more they say they just got their independence from friends. I don't they don't I don't never hear them say No, Mexican Independence Day is not until September. So you wanna know where Cinco de Mayo came from? I know it's I, I what I was what I was told from some of the Mexicans. Is that a yes or a no? Yes. Yeah. You go if you guys ever go to court, you're gonna all go to jail because you don't know how to answer questions. If they ask you a <laughs> yes or no question, you just answer yes or no. So would you like to know where Cinco de Mayo actually came from? Yes. yes. Here in Los Angeles, there's an area called Olivera Street. In the, the Pueblo area. It was all run down, ransacked. And so the city council decided to renovate that area. But they couldn't figure out how to bring in tourists and business because for a long time that was the area where the prostitutes and the and the criminals used to hang out. So what they had to do was do some research to find something connected to Mexico. The only thing they could find in the month of May connected to Mexico was one battle involving the French. Now, the Mexicans whipped their ass on Cinco de Mayo, but later on the French came in and wiped them out, so you don't hear that part of the story. <laughs> I'm Cinco de Mayo is not even celebrated in Mexico. 
Cinco de Mayo has not a damn thing to do with Mexican independence. It's all about drinking beer because they had to figure out a holiday to bring in tourists into Los Angeles. Mm. Damn. So it's a money scam. It's all about the money. See, even the Mexicans don't even know their own history. Man. Of course not. Well, you just ate. Hey, don't be talking too loud there, Miss Rosa Parks. <laughs> 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 well, you know, it is what it is. Man, it I want to. Let's no. get into the John Birch Society, the Jill Stein. Never heard of them. <laughs> well, John Birch, for those of you that haven't heard of them, organization founded in 1958 uh, by three members. Uh, one of and them, who are those members, sir? One was the uh, Koch brothers' father. Uh, and I'm Fred not. Koch? And I'm not. Um, not complete on the other two's names. Yes, sir, but go ahead. Uh, but these people, after three days, 72 hours of hardcore night and day research by this guy, dude, it was a mind-blowing uh, odyssey journey. You know, uh, Let me just make this very simple. The, Cop the John Birch Society now occupies the White House. They now run the Congress, and they now run the U.S. Supreme Court. All three. All three. So let me tell you folks something that you're not going to hear anywhere else, and this is probably going to get me into trouble, but I don't give a damn. During the Iran-Contra hearing, a lot of the folks that were involved with that are now back. Now, I'm sure because you guys are scholars, you probably have already heard the rumors about Ali North and Eric Prince creating a private army. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Let me explain to you about Iran Contra. Now, of course, you know Iran Contra had to do with bringing drugs into the major cities of the U.S., right? It was about funding black ops programs as well. Right, but what I'm saying is this is how it works. You help us down in your country, and we'll look the other way when you're bringing drugs here to make money. Right. In fact, in Watts, there's a high school, Lock High School, CIA director came to Lock High School and he got confronted by this and less than two weeks later he was forced to resign from CIA. Oh boy. I don't make this stuff up, folks. So the war on drugs right now. is basically by this. By the way, that was, CIA, that, that was CIA director John Deutsch. D-E-U-T-C-A. Now Deutsch. why am I telling you this? The only reason Congress was able to go after the Reagan administration and Iran Contra is because they use money approved by Congress to fund their illegal operations down in Central America. By the way, was this Central America, remember, was Iran Contra, so they were also in Iran. They were giving single missiles to Iranians, even though they claim that they don't deal with terrorists. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, why am I telling you this? What did I just say? The only reason Congress was able to go after them because they use taxpayers' money to fund their illegal operation. That's our money, so guys. How you, so how do you get around not having Congress being able to go after you? Mm -hmm. Presidential pardon? Uh, no. no. I'm going to say this again. The only reason Congress was able to go after them is because they use taxpayers', taxpayers money to fund their illegal operation. So how do you get around Congress not being able to go after you? At that point, I don't see how you can. If you smuggle the dope, Let's do it without them knowing. I'm gonna try to make this simple for you. Don't use taxpayers' money. Mm -hmm. Listen to what I'm telling you, gentlemen, and for you listeners that are listening to the show today, who might see this later. The John Birch Society. It's privatizing all government agencies. Right now, Eric Prince, Knights of Malta, John Burr Society member, he has his own private army. He started out with Blackwater, then he went to XV, now he calls it something else. What I'm telling you is, if Donald Trump creates a private army where the money comes from their private backers, Congress can't do a damn thing to stop them. Well, is it true that Donald Trump uses his own private security and not uh, secret service? That's what I'm trying to tell you. They're privatizing everything. Everything. And old boy's sister is the secretary of education. 
Yeah, the boss. Well, Secretary of Education, Eric Chris's sister, and under this new tax plan, she and her family stand to make billions of dollars because they're the ones who run the companies that collect the money from all these college student the loans. Mm. And where are we not seeing the defeatism in this? Dude, how old are you? 45. All right, let me tell you about being 45. I am 60, 60 years old. From 1957 until 1962, I wandered the streets of Harlem. Back in the days of Father Divine, all these folks. You ever, any of you guys ever heard of Father Divine? I haven't. It, it like this. Damn, it, it, you guys got a lot of homework. <laughs> <laughs> well, let me just give you a hint about Father Divine. In the restaurants in Harlem, there was always one table that nobody sat at because if Father Divine came in there, that would be his table. You guys ever heard of Jim Jones? Oh, yeah. 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 <clears throat> he stole all his ideas from Father Divine. Okay, it, it makes, it makes, it's make it, I, I get it. Jim Jones is the cult. So, yeah, he's a repeater. Yeah. yeah, I know Jim Jones is. In 1962, I went from Harlem to Johns Island, South Carolina. Segregated, couldn't drink out of a water fountain, had to be inside my grandmother's house by dark because if you weren't, the Klan, the John Birth Society, or the White Citizens Councils will just come out and hang you, shoot you. And I'm still here, folks. So while you're saying defeat is my ass, what I'm telling you is we have survived slavery, we have survived Reconstruction, and we have survived Jim Crow, and we're going to survive this. I am not telling you defeat is. I'm telling you, guess what? They ain't going to win. I got hope in Virginia during the last election. I also got hope in Alabama. And so I ask you brothers right now, who more than anybody else was responsible for Roy Moore not getting elected in Alabama? Black women. There you go, brother. Going right back to the Matrix movies. Who did Keanu Reeves go to? The Black. Oracle. Black, yeah, Black woman. So don't tell me about the fetus, brother, because we've been here before, and we're still going to survive. Gotcha. Gotcha. And I think that's something that we need to hear. Yeah. We need to hear that. Well, that's why you brought me on. Heck yeah. <laughs> I brought me on. I feel, you on. Know? I feel like I just... Hey, hey, that's why I'm not... Hey, that's why I'm not out chasing white girls right now. I'm happy <laughs> <on>. <laughs> Every time I talk to you, I feel like... You know, because I'm very versed on so many topics and this and that. But after I talked to you, I felt like I was a... A freshman in high school, and damn it, yeah. I got yeah, but, I got to get that. You more like you more like back in the sixth grade, but it's all oh. <laughs> that's that's why I ain't say that. I'm like, man, I I mean this it's like, but it's good because I'm soaking all this in, and, right. I'm gonna, and we're gonna act on it, and we're I'm gonna, gonna go home, deep. and I'm gonna go home and re-listen to this whole conversation. Oh yeah, but so you don't understand. You're talking to somebody who's died twice. I died once as a child, and I died once as an adult. So I've seen, and I'm able to see things that other people can't see. Right. Once you've had a near-death experience, your life is never again the same. Mm -hmm. And that's why I, I personally want to say, Mark, I, I'm just so thankful. You know, we're a small-time operation here. You know, we ain't blossom yet. But you take time of your busy well, life. Well, if you were in a small-time operation, I wouldn't be here. Well. Because corporate media is not going to allow somebody like myself to come on and say what I'm telling you. No, true. So also, I have a question, sir. Where do you uh, see everything going on with the Russia investigation? What do you want to know? Any and everything. Okay, here's a movie for you and the listeners. I highly recommend. It's called Our Kind of Traitor. In fact, there's a sister in that movie whose bath water I would drink. <laughs> <laughs> Our kind of traitor. Our kind of traitor. Our kind of traitor, because that is one of the few movies that shows you how the Russian mafia has compromised the British government, and you can just go ahead and say, guess what, the same thing's going on here. Yeah, because everyone's... Well, we, had, 
I'm sorry? Uh, I was just about to say, everyone says how rich Trump got, but we all know Trump got his money from casinos, and casinos are run by who? The mob. Well, Trump's not as rich as he thinks he is, or pretends to be, and um, he owes a lot of money to the Russian mob as well as the Saudis. But anyway, my point to you is this one. That movie, Our Kind of Traitor, when you watch that movie, you'll realize what's really going on, but more importantly, we had the so-called Cold War, correct? Correct. Right. Who was president that tried to take credit for the end of the Cold War? Ronald Reagan. Who was president of Russia at the time? Mikhail Gorbachev. Yeah. And where did they meet? They met in uh, Malta. You know, the same place I told you oh, the shit. journalist was killed two months ago because she was telling the truth? Oh, damn. Wake up, guys. Who was Ronald Reagan's campaign manager when he ran for president? Oh, God. Oh, fuck. William Casey. I was probably Ever like... Remember the name William Casey? I was probably like in diapers when he, no. when he ran for Who president. Who was William Casey? William Casey was nice as Malta, OSS boy, and later became Reagan's CIA director. But more importantly, at the island of Malta, they signed a peace accord. Correct. After Gorbachev left office, who became president of, of Russia? Uh, it was that one fool. He was the fat guy. The oh, fuck. Um, no, it wasn't Gorbachev. It was. Uh, I know. I, I'm just. It was one right I'm, before Putin. Before he. Hey, came. we used to laugh about him and talk about having Boris Yeltsin. Yeah, Boris Yeltsin. Hey, you good, who do you think put Boris Yeltsin in power? The Russian oligarch. Reagan. Uh, Reagan. No. Reagan. Try again. We did. Fuck. How do we there make There is it? no Russia. There is no U.S. There is no Great Britain. There is no France. Have you guys ever seen the movie Network? Never heard of it. <laughs> We're killing this guy. I know. I mean, but it's all good. It's okay. all good because I feel like, like we're going to like like Down movie. Syndrome or something. Write this down. The movie Network. In that movie, they tell you I'll say there is no Russia. Oh, by the way, this movie came out in the early 80s. There is no Russia. There is no U.S. There is no China. There's only rubles. Only rubles. And dollars. Didn't did I say something about that in one of the shows? I'm, I'm going to go back and look. I think I said something about that. This is the movie that's too famous. I know you guys have heard this line. I'm mad as hell. I'm not going to take it anymore. Yeah, Aaron right. Russo. That's network. Uh, Everybody should see the movie Network. Because that movie also shows you how the news media was taken over by the entertainment industry, and you no longer get news, you get entertainment. Right, right. So what I'm telling you is this. The oligarchs in Russia are in bed with the oligarchs in the U.S. who are in bed with the oligarchs in Great Britain and around the world. One big happy family. You know it. Um, No. In fact, one of the reasons that we're headed for a world war, right now we have what's called BRICS. Yeah, so BRICS. B-R-I-C-S. Have you ever heard of BRICS? Isn't that the British leaving the European Union? Or no. I'm going to say this again. B-R-I-C as in Charles F. BRICS. Never heard of them. Brazil, Russia, India, China, in South Africa. That they are coming up with their own money system. The hell you say? We got the petrol dollar. That, that And that is a threat to the petrol dollar and that's why we're headed for a world war. Yeah, because if you get rid of if you want to leave the petrol, petrol dollar, dollar you're gonna get some freedom. You're starting to see the big picture. Yeah, you get whoever leaves the petrol dollar gets some freedom. Look, I've always said there this Mark. The thin layer of civility in this nation, which we observe on a daily basis, requires three things. One, it requires electricity. Two, it requires yep. money. And three, yep. it requires brainwashing into the American apple so pie. So if I thing. shut down the electricity in this country for just three days, what would happen to the population? Oh, done. It, chaos. The motherfuckers... Most, are... girls, most women can't even cook anymore. <laughs> right. So, let's go back to Britain. When Cuba was close to coming online with BRICS, that's when Barack Obama reopened negotiation 
and trade with Cuba. Mm-hmm. Really? Stop them from joining BRICS. As I'm speaking to you right now, members from Syria, Russia, and Turkey are meeting, and they haven't even invited the United States to join their meeting, now that ISIS is supposed to so-called defeated in Syria. Have you ever heard of a guy named um, Muammar Gaddafi? Yes, he yeah, died from the Gaddafi. DNR, trying to get the people on the gold standard in Africa. Um, no, it's a little deeper than that. Gaddafi got together with all the black leaders of countries in Africa who produce oil and said, through the U.S., through Great Britain, let's create our own economic cooperation. And that's why he had to go. Was that not OPEC? Don't they already have that? First of all, OPEC, the, the U.S. is not even a member of OPEC. No, they Most people don't even know that. No, no, no. They yeah, but they control they all the oil, the crude, the crude on international. Not if, not if, not if Gaddafi had gotten those black leaders. Yeah, it's a lot of, it's a lot of untapped resources on the continent of Africa. Uh, that's an endless, uh, let me ask you this, because somebody mentioned earlier the driverless vehicle. Yeah, I right did. now, the so-called liberals and the left wing and the Green Party and PETA and the environmental groups, what are they all going after? Who? What industry are they trying to destroy? Hmm. The dirty coal industry. The fossil fuel industry. Yeah. And what, what do they want to replace gas-operated vehicles with? Electric. And do you know what you require to have an electric car? I don't know that we're going to have a Coltran. Coltan. Cobalt. Cobalt. The number one producer of cobalt is a small country in what continent? Probably Africa. There uh. you go. <laughs> oh. I could do this all hey, I could do this all day, brother. You know, this is about so Let me ask you this. What do most people in this country have to have when they wake up in the morning? Oh. Some sort of coffee or sugar. Cigarette. Right. And where does most of the coffee come from now? Oh, it should come from South America. Colombia or... Uh, no. Mm-hmm. When's the last time you saw a Juan Valdez commercial? It comes from the... Uh... It comes from Rwanda, an African country. No way. Yeah. See, they were... That's, what, my ass. that's what they were talking about, like, a, how a lot of... Uh, Chinese industries is moving into Africa yep. yeah. and in, in the Caribbean, too. they see too. the future. See, you guys are looking oh, at the day. Let me explain you how this operates. Since I was trained by them and I participated with them, we don't look at what's going on today. We look at what's going to go on 30 years from now. As I'm speaking to you right now, there are probably 30 ships off the coast of L.A. and Long Beach. You know what kind of ships those are? Military vessels? Oil tankers. Where do we get our oil from? Well, I thought we got the, the vast majority from the Middle East, Suez Canal. Uh, no, we get our oil from Venezuela, Mexico, Canada. But isn't Venezuela right now in an economic, like, you know... Okay, I'm going to say this again. We get our oil from Venezuela, Mexico, and Canada. Okay. You ever heard of a gas station called Valero? Yes, in California. That's Venezuela. Mm-hmm. So, how much oh. oil do we get from the United States? Yes, how we much? We run our cars. I'm sorry? How much do we get from us, from our own? Very little. Yeah, it's probably less than, less than 5%. So, if we get all of our oil and gas from other countries, what happens when they run out? Ha, <laughs> fuck you guys, starve. That's what happens. Yep. Guess who's the only person who has oil and gas? We do. There you go. Yes. That's I, the big picture. Yes, it is, sir. Yes, it Use is. Up all right this now, stuff. if you guys yeah. want to see a movie that showed you this 25 years ago, before she went crazy on me and got both of her boobs locked off, I used to be so in love with Brad Pitt's ex-wife. You know who that is, right? Brad Pitt's ex-wife? Angelina Jolie. Yeah. yeah, but she was always a slut. I mean, she was being a stepfather when she was 14 years old. But my point is this, okay? She was in a movie called Hackers. You ever seen Hackers? Yeah, uh-huh. I did that movie. Yeah, I did years ago. Did that movie not show you how they control the oil? Yeah, zero cool. Did that movie not show you how they control the oil? Yes, it did. And they had 
ships off the coast that had nothing to do with the supply of oil, but they waited until the price of oil went up, and then those ships would then deliver the oil to that country that needed oil. Supply and demand. Supply and demand. It's like, have you guys ever heard the term trickle-down economics? Oh, God, yes. yes. All right, so let me ask you a question. You four gentlemen, you're pretty astute. Let's say all four of you own a company. Would you hire more employees because I gave you more money for your no. company? No, no, that makes, no, that makes no sense. What would be the number one reason why you would hire more people? Demand. Demand. Thank you. So why the hell are people still buying into this lie about trickle-down economy where if we allow the wealthy to get a tax break, they'll bring more jobs yeah. back to the U.S.? Mm-hmm. You don't create jobs based on how much money you have. You create jobs based on how many people are willing to buy the product you are willing to offer. Right. Mm-hmm. Right. And you don't hear the Democrats saying what I'm telling you right now. Well, because and you won't. Of, yeah, the Democrats are lost fucking. Dude, they're lost fucking cause. Right. You know, and the Republicans are not far behind. The only reason why I agree with them is because I agree with you know not well, killing uh, unborn babies, you know, and things of that nature. For you know, up forward with their whole agenda, you know they don't. You know, they don't so that makes perfect. So I'm just gonna I'm gonna let you in on a little secret here. Things have changed. <clears throat> And because of the monopolies, it's hard to figure out who owns what anymore. Right. But when I became a major in the Marine Corps, you had five branches of the service. U.S. Army, U.S. Navy, U.S. Air Force, U.S. Marine Corps, and U.S. Coast Coast Guard. Guard. The Giannini family owned the Coast Guard. You know them as Bank of America. The Mellon family owned the Air Force. The Rockefeller family owned the Navy. The Morgan family owned the Marine Corps. And the DuPont family owned the U.S. Army. However, I will say because starting with Reagan's administration with deregulation and now under Trump, you can't even tell who owns what anymore. Their name might be on it, but you don't really know who owns it. So it's hard for black folks to go out and boycott anymore because they don't even know who they're boycotting. Right. Mm-hmm. Was it you that said that... Uh, I don't remember saying anything. And don't call me a you because I'm not a female. <laughs> 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 oh, Mr. <laughs> <Anna>. <laughs> Correct me if I was wrong. But did you not say, or did you say, that uh, blacks wouldn't be able to serve in the military without executive order? Well, what happened is this, okay? I'm from South Carolina. Mary McLeod Bethune, and I'm not going to say any disparaging things about her, but, um, uh, <laughs> she and Eleanor Roosevelt might have been closer than most people know. But, um, <laughs> Mary, Mc- Mary McLeod Bethune and Eleanor Roosevelt got Franco Delano Roosevelt to change the rules. The Marine Corps was the last U.S. Armed Forces to integrate. In fact, Clint Eastwood came out with a movie in the 90s about World War II and Marine Corps. And I'm not going to take credit for it, but I will say that I led the charge to make sure he didn't get an Academy Award nomination because there were blacks who came to him on his movie studio set before he finished that movie and said, why don't you include blacks in the movie? (laughs) Have you guys ever seen a movie of the Iwo Jima or Marines landing with any Negroes in it? No. No. You don't even see so those. I'm going to ask you guys this. You got four gentlemen in the studio. Who in this room can tell me who the Buffalo um, the Buffalo soldiers are? Well, I know of them. You know, during the okay. uh, uh, American okay. Indian Wars. Who in this room can tell me who the Tuskegee Airmen are? Well, we know they are. Yeah. yeah. Red Tails. Now, who can tell me who the Montfort Point Marines are? Never heard of them. I'm sorry, dead silence, including one guy in the room who's got all kinds of relatives who are Negroes in the Marine Corps. Yeah. So, I'm going to send you my Facebook site because I run a site dedicated to the Monster Point Marines, Buffalo Soldiers, and Tuskegee Airmen. The Monster Point Marines were the first black Marines allowed into the Marine Corps during World War II. However, I'll tell you this because you know me, I deal with history, not his story. Correct. You want to know when the first black Marine served in the Marine Corps? Lay it on us. 
during the Revolutionary War. Oh, James Small. Am I correct? Nope. Okay. His name, his nickname is Keto, K-E-T-O. So when you board this Google list, K-E-T-O, U.S. Marine Corps. Can I write that out? Trust me, most black, most white people know what I'm telling you. Anyway, my point to you is this. Eleanor Roosevelt and it's too much. Mary McLeod Bethune convinced FDR to integrate all the services. But why would a couple of lesbians com- want to do that? You had a commandant of the Marine Corps at the time. His name was Holcomb, H-O-L-C-O-M-B. And he goes, I don't give a damn about your wife. The Marine Corps is supposed to have blood as pure as the Aryan Viking race. No way. Well, I should know because Holcomb's grandson was dating a friend of mine, and after I was done with her, uh, she broke up with him. (laughs) (laughs) You only get that hurt, folks. You only get that hurt. Holy shit. No, but he just... Did you guys not hear what this man said? Yeah, I heard what he said. He just said this motherfucking commandant said that he could pierce Aryan fucking race. Yeah, well, hear me, folks. His name is Thomas Holcomb. You Google that one. Commandant of the Marine Corps for the first two years. So Eleanor Roosevelt and Mary McLeod Bethune got Roosevelt to get rid of him. They integrated the Marine Corps. Marine Corps was the last service to integrate. I will just tell you this. I became a Marine Corps commission officer in 1981. I was a sergeant before I became a Marine officer. There are less black Marines today as officers than when I became a commission officer in 81. They are taking their country back. Damn. During world, um, during the Persian Gulf War, as well as Iraq and Afghanistan, you had Marines using all kinds of Nazi symbols. Damn. They're back. So anyway, what I'm trying to tell you is this. It wasn't until Harry Truman came in, and I suspect that um, Roosevelt was killed, but that's a story for another day. When Truman came in, he passed an executive order forcing all U.S. armed forces to integrate. So you four men are very smart, very astute. As a president, if I pass an executive order, what can you do if you come in after I do? Now, I'm gone. I can just nail and void that shit with my own executive order. There you go. So what Mm -hmm. most folks in this country don't even know, the only thing that even allows blacks to be in the U.S. armed forces is an executive order and Trump can get rid of that today. Damn. Damn. Well, I mean, there ain't nothing but silence over here, dude. There's nothing but fucking silence. I'm just soaking it all up. I'm in sponge mode. You know, I'm in sponge mode. Because I, I thought I... Man, like I, I said, after you talk to this man, you think you, you're up on something, man. No. You just realize you... Oh, we, we got a long way. Right. Hey, let's go back to the John Burr Society. What three people do Southern blacks especially, but most blacks around the country, had on their walls in the 60s and early 70s? No, oh, Elvis Presley, fucking no, John F. Elvis. Kennedy. No, <laughs> John F. Kennedy, Martin Luther King Jr., and Robert F. Kennedy. Yes. So who was Robert F. Kennedy? John this, F. Kennedy's brother. brother. Uh, the uh, uh, U.S. Uh, Attorney General. Yes. Yeah, but Robert F. Kennedy didn't want to be attorney general. Do you know what he wanted to be? What? The number one attorney for the John Burke Society. Why? They all part of the club. And who was the head of the John Burke Society in the 1950s during the House on the Un-American Campaign Committee? You know, where everybody in Hollywood was a damn communist. Who was oh, in charge of that? MacArthur. McCarthy.
he went after the mob and, you know, the rest of the city. <laughs> yeah, so my point right. to you is this. The John Birch Society is bigger and stronger than ever before. Reagan was John Birch Society. They couldn't get what they wanted to accomplish back in those days. It took them 25 plus years. They now are in the White House. Trump is John Birch Society. Pence is John Birch Society. I already told you they took over Congress and they've taken over the Supreme Court. Did you have a Supreme Court justice who died recently? Yes, Galea. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Where did he die? He died down in Texas on a Illuminati. On a ranch that's owned by a John Birch Society member who was a part of the Iran Contra scandal. Huh? Yeah, they oh, didn't do like a, they didn't do a, 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 nothing. You'll like this one, too. No, that that ranch is where the Bohemian yeah. Grove meets in Texas. You just said the Bohemian Grove meet in Texas. They have more than one place. You think San Francisco is the only place they meet? What the hell's wrong with you, dude? Yeah. Yeah, you're right. So what the why is pretty naive. Know. See, here's the problem. Yeah, spice it you up. You asked me that, but what you didn't ask me was who's the guy from Iran Contra who owns the ranch down in Texas? Yes. You want to know? Yeah. Yeah, we want to know. We want to know his everything. John po- his, non- his name is John Poindexter. I've heard that name before. Yeah. Yeah, but you have. And what kind of autopsy was done on Scalia? Zero. Nothing. So why was Scalia taken out? Because they needed that fucking seat to swing the court. And that's why they stopped Obama from putting anybody on the bench. Yes. Scalia was going to go along against the John Burr Society, so they had to take him out. That makes perfect sense. Have you guys ever seen the movie Pelican Brief? Yeah. Uh, Yes, years ago. And what was that movie about? When Supreme Court justices don't go along with what your agenda is, remove them. Hollywood always tell you what they plan on doing. Man, that sounds like some kingpin of Office of Naval so Intelligence. That, so saying. the reason, so why wasn't Merrick Garland nominated? Uh, who nominated him? Didn't President Obama nominate him? They don't want Obama's nominations. Well, I'm talking to you. Listen to me. While you're being distracted with Trump tweets, Trump's administration has already appointed more federal appellate court judges than any other president in history in four years in office. And that's the lower courts, right? 68% of all cases are decided on the lower court and never make it to the Supreme Court. Mm -hmm. Mm. And... You know how they talk about this one guy who's not qualified to be on the bench? Yeah. Remember how they said House Negro Uncle Tom Clarence Thomas wasn't qualified to be on the bench? <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, let me enlighten you since you guys had never got, you know, you didn't get U.S. constitutional classes in high school and you don't know about civics. Those are presidential appointees. They don't need to be qualified. Or vetted by the American people. No, it's whoever they want to put in there. That's there you go. In fact, you don't even have to be a lawyer to be on the Supreme Court. Mm. You just need to be appointed by the, by the, by the president. And ratified by the uh, Senate. So mm. what I'm telling you is right now they're padding the federal appellate court. Lifetime appointments. They hate Negroes. They hate women. And they're all part of the John Burr Society, and they're going to be running things for 10, 20, 30, 40 years to come. So to answer your question, what's coming down in this country, I just told you. I think I, when, I, when I get to the house, I'm going to sharpen those pitchforks. You know, yeah, I was talking to the Lord of Show. Let me ask you a question. Don't both your side. While you sharpening your pitchforks, we got drones watching you right now. <laughs> oh, I know. I know. I'm well, I'm, well aware of my, I'm well aware of what's going on. And that's why all I do is coach my little female white surfers and don't give a shit because I, I've already warned you guys for 25 years. You call me conspiratorial. You call me paranoid. And I'm just enjoying my retirement now. And the only reason I came on this show tonight because I know you got a lot of young folks out there who've never heard what I'm sharing before. Exactly. But they're all high tech, 
and they're going to be Googling their asses off all weekend going, holy fuck, he's telling me the truth. What the hell? I've never heard this. <laughs> that is exactly what the fuck I said two days ago yeah. after talking to this man. This is crazy, dude. This is fucking crazy. Okay. I, I mean, that's, a, that's been an hour and a half of footage. No, so what's worse is this. No, all, all kidding aside, your 90 minutes of footage, if I was a whore, I could be making hundreds of thousands of dollars going around the country selling it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And he did but I won't sell my soul. And don't think they haven't sent me some of the finest white women on the planet to try to compromise me. Mm. How do I know this? I was a member of most of those globalist organizations. They taught me well. And when I realized what their agenda was, I dropped out because I'm not going to sell my soul for power, money, fame, or fortune. Real quick, Mark, could you please, please uh, explain what Jill Stein and this fucking constitutional (laughs) deal can do to the country? Please, please, it's important. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. What do you want to know? I just want to know, you know, how bad they hate the neocons, neo Confederates. How bad they hate America. Hillary Clinton's a neocon. Go ahead. Uh, How Jill Stein. Wait, wait, wait. wait, wait. This is important. Let me tell you who the neocons are. Okay, during the Civil Rights Movement, a lot of whites, a lot of Jews supported the Civil Rights Movement. What blacks came in that caused problems for Martin Luther King? Uh, uh, Malcolm X, I would say. And. Probably a lot of re- James Ball or uh, Carmichael. Mm. Mm. Malcolm X, Stokely Carmichael, another black activist said, "You know what? We don't have a problem with the civil rights movement. What we have a problem with is too many white Jews are deciding how we're going to run it. Mm. A Just lot like of the Jews got shit. offended by the so-called Black Panthers." Black Gorilla Family, students from um, the, the, the SNCC and other groups, and these Jews became so angry with blacks, they created the neoconservative party to dismantle everything Johnson was doing to help blacks in America. That's where your neocons came from. You say LBJ was actually trying to help blacks? Hell yeah, but LBJ was not a racist. LBJ was a guy who ran for office in Texas and realized that he was going to lose because he supported black people. And he said, I will never be out niggered again. You want to know somebody else who wasn't a racist? Yes. George Wallace. Governor George Wallace. You heard me. George Wallace was a black... Hey, George Wallace loved black people so much. One night... By the way, George Wallace was a Golden Glove boxing champion of Alabama. He was coming out of the gym one night, and these white racist clan members were kicking and killing this black guy. He saved the black guy's life. In the process, he broke his hand and was never able to box again. I bet you never heard that story before. No, mm-hmm. no. I'm sure you haven't. Because I was indoctrinated so, to believe George Wallace was a racist who wanted to kill us. So what happened was George Wallace, when he ran for office the first time, he lost because he was in love with the niggers. And he swore he would never be out niggered again, so he had to say what they wanted to hear to get in the office. Right. Gotcha. The same, the same oh, take that they hey, use now. Yeah. Yeah. It was George Wallace in a wheelchair who kissed a black woman at the University of Alabama when, he was, when she was the first black homecoming queen at the University of Alabama. But what about his speech he gave? You know, uh, there will be no integration in Alabama now. Did you hear me? He said what they wanted to hear so he can get elected. That's politics. Gotcha. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Done. I got it. Yeah, they said right. anyway, so what I just said. When you look at the folks who were white and Jewish who supported the civil rights movement, they became so angry with Malcolm X, Sophie Carmichael, Black Panther Party. They created the neoconservatives. And they tried to dismantle everything that Johnson and other folks did under the so called um, civil rights movement and the Voting Rights Act. Just like Black Lives Matter. What they did here in St. Louis County. Yeah. 
before Nick showed up, got people into uh, voting mode, there was no blacks. I don't know, one or two. Have you been reading that damn crap that that damn radical Mark from Anaheim's been writing? (laughs) (laughs) I've been subverted by that guy. (laughs) I've been subverted. I wish I was making it up. And I will say this, you might believe this, but trust me, far more white folks follow me than blacks, including a lot of cops in the military who hate my guts, but they know I will never lie to them, and they're going, shit, I've been had. Because the most dangerous organization in this country right now is the John Birch Society. But an organization that was created by the John Birch Society that's heavily infiltrated by the U.S. military as well as law enforcement, the Oath Keepers. Uh-uh. No. I thought those guys were true patriots for the Republic. Uh, that's why you're not part of the Republic, dude. Damn. The Oath Keepers are John Burke Society members, and they never had liked Obama. They hate the federal government, and they will refuse to follow any orders from the federal government. Which protects us. There it is. That's they plan on privatizing. In fact, around this country right now, they're privatizing police departments. They're privatizing fire departments. In fact, you take I'm from South Carolina. Eighty-five percent of all fire um, fire in South Carolina are volunteer. They ain't getting paid, right? Because they've lost their federal funding. The majority of the fire department in this little town is, is yeah. voluntary. Voluntary. Mm-hmm. Dude, you have to tell me about Missouri. You guys who NAACP said it wasn't even fit to fly into. <laughs> yeah, but we, but we all know the NAACP don't don't represent us anyway. Okay, but my point to you is this. Okay, we are headed for a civil war, and we are headed for a war war. I'm not going to come on this show and tell anybody what he or she shouldn't do. What I will say to you is this. The time for talking is over. You can either rise up against fascism and do something about it, or you can sit back quietly and hope that they don't come after you, just like the Jews in World War II. Uh Because when they first came after the gypsies, nobody said shit. Right. Mm -hmm. But they weren't gypsies. Came out to Rhineland and bastards. They didn't say shit. There it is. And then when they come so, after you, ain't nobody left. I knew from the time I was only like 16. Well, actually, I was only 14 because I I got introduced to politics back in Washington D.C. during the Pentagon Papers, Me Lai Massacre, and the Watergate scandal. Martha Mitchell taught me a lot, and they killed her. Mm. But the one thing I learned from Martha Mitchell was. If you're not willing to die, then shut the fuck up. Stay out of the damn arena. Resist. Stay out of the resistance, and they're gonna kill you anyway. But at least you might live longer than those who are gonna stand up. Mm-hmm. I've never been a punk. I was never taught to be a punk. And these guys already know. I'm not joining the Oath Keepers. I'm not joining their fucking Tea Party. I'm not gonna join their John Burke Society, and that makes me a threat. So I'm just happy that they even allowed me to be on your show tonight. We're we're, we're, we're appreciate it. We appreciate it, brother. We appreciate it, man. I mean, there's been ever since you've been talking, there's been straight silence over here. And these brothers love to talk. And uh, you know, sometimes it's best you just be shut quiet. the fuck up and right. listen. Listen exactly. to the master. Well, you, let him instruct. You're in Missouri, and all I can say is Missouri worships and kisses the phallic symbol of Russ Limbaugh. So what more yeah. do I need to say? I wonder yeah. why I wonder why Missouri after twenty eighteen is gonna be the only state in the whole US, from my knowledge, of the only way that you could travel outside of Missouri you gotta have a passport. What? So yeah. you wanna yeah. see a you wanna, uh-uh, you wanna see I didn't a hear movie? about this. Yeah, that's true. Hey, you wanna you wanna see a movie that oh, shows me? What's uh, that? A movie that that shows me from Missouri? Lay it on us, man. Have you ever heard of Jewel? The the artist? Well, a country music artist. Yeah. Yes. Well, she was in a movie called Ride Like the Devil. A 
lot of these white folks consider me some reincarnated Confederate general. Maybe I am, I don't know. But I would have to say during the Civil War, if I was probably around, I would be like the black character that's in the movie, Ride Like the Devil. Mm. You guys need to see that movie. Because <laughs> it's all about Missouri. <laughs> And Jesse James and the boys, I know shit about Jesse James that you guys have never heard. And I know that, well... Wasn't, wasn't that. A Jesse James a Jew? I don't know what that means, because, I mean, some people use the term Jew to mean ethnicity, while some people mean Jew as a religion. Jesse James was a southern aristocrat. After they lost their property after the war, they got to become... That outlawed. doesn't make him an aristocrat. He was a hero because he fought against those who were aristocrats. In the, the South or North? Company, the bank. Mm. Like a modern day Robin there Hood. Was a, there was a movie that came out last year that nobody talked about. Well, it might have come out early this year. It's called Hell or High Water. I highly recommend that movie. No blacks in it, but I highly recommend it because it's the Jesse James of now. And how white folks in this country have been screwed. And that's why Hillary Clinton lost, because she didn't give a damn about poor white folks. She didn't give a damn about working class white folks. Mm -hmm. And when you don't support working class <coughs> white folks, it's never going to happen. So all I'm going to say before we end this show today is this. I don't tell anybody what to do. But for those of you out there who are black or brown, if you don't find a way to show... White folks who are blue-collar workers, working class, lower class, that we have more in common than we don't, we're going to lose the Civil War that's coming. Mm. Because they really believe that Trump is going to save them, and Trump don't give a damn about them any more than he gives a damn about us. Mm. Mm -hmm. mm. Don't always say what means, stand up and fight back. Yeah. So, trust me, uh, today I mentioned a whole bunch of stuff. One, oh, God, yeah. Ride with the devil. Two, hell or high water. Three, the book, Carol Quigley's book, Tragedy and Hope. Four, the movie, Our Kind of Traitor. You guys got a lot of homework. <laughs> oh, God, yeah. <laughs> yes, we do. I mean, I and just... Since I quit, hey, and since I quit LAPD... I have been 100% celibate, don't date anybody, because I knew when I came back on the radio, they would love to use some woman to set me up. So oh, I yeah. Don't, uh, Mark Franheim just got caught raping or touching this bitch in the exactly. fucking... Exactly. Yeah. Well, you don't have to even say that. Mm. Mark Franheim, who coaches young female surfers, has had an improper relationship yeah. with a 12-year-old female white surfer. Oh, that is a wrap. Oh, it's, it's, it's a wrap. There it is. It's game over. Well, I just want to say I appreciate uh, you taking the time yeah, out. <laughs> it won't get paid. Exactly. <laughs> he knew we were broke when you gave us the loan. Exactly. Now, but let me tell you this. You want to say this, thank let me you. Let tell you this, okay? One thing that I learned living in Charleston, South Carolina. I'd go to stores in South Carolina where, you know, whatever I bought, I had to buy it and pay it right then and there. But then I would look on the wall, and I would see white families in Charleston right. who hadn't paid their bill for 20 fucking years. Mm -hmm. I wish that was making... By the way, for you folks from Charleston, if you want to know such store, one was called M. Dumas and Son. I mean, they would actually have the names of people who hadn't paid their bill in 20 years. But because they were white and DNA bloodline from certain families in Charleston, they got a pass. You know... What county is Tr uh, Charlotte, uh, South Carolina in? Charleston. Or Charleston. Charlotte's in North Carolina. I was thinking of Charlotte. Charleston, Charleston, South Carolina. Right, but Charlotte, I believe North Carolina, is named after... Okay, you mentioned Charlotte. Do you know who Charlotte was? I was about ready to go into all that, but you're probably way more versed. Tell them about... Who was Charlotte? She was a queen was of England. She was the queen of England's half-sister. Her, na her hair start turning nappy. She's and a like, model. Yes. Yes. We're and the it, only people on the planet that they have a word for. Balado, Quadroon, Octoroon. Still comes back to nigger. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And that goes back to Princess Diane. Like Charlotte was a black chick, right? They, they the sent her to America. 
And they you know had, the one drop ruler? Yes, you had one drop of black blood in you, you black. There you go. And yeah. so now a lot of white folks are no longer doing this legacy.com because they're finally out, oh my god, I'm a nigga! Subs. <laughs> and you know one thing I hate about that? How can they call the black like, team sub Saharan? Like, he's all upset because he's finding out, oh my god, my relatives were slave owners! Mm. But I'm sorry. Go ahead, brother. Well, it's, it's, what I want to say is Charlotte and McAmer, the, the yep. city of Charlotte. McKenna. Uh, McKenna is in the yeah, county McKenna. that was named after her after they sent her from England over to here to the New World to set up shop because, you know, at that time the queen didn't want to have that nappy head running around the court. And that goes back to Princess Diana. We all know that she was fucking around with the Egyptian guy. That right. queen stop, was stop, not... Stop, stop, stop. You want to know about Princess Diana? Yeah. First of all, she never even graduated from high school. She was a 16-year-old slut. Who they stole say she her... liked the brothers. Listen to me. She was a 16-year-old slut who stole her sister's boyfriend. So everybody puts her on a pedestal. She was dumb as a doorknob, never graduated high school. And she, uh, let me just say this. That Negro or that mulatto right now that's dating somebody from the royal family? Uh -huh. Yeah. That's not even Prince Charles' son. What? That's what I heard, too. Wasn't well, it? he has red hair. Mm -hmm. And uh, go back and watch the movie Ronan. I'm a Ronan. You know what a Ronan is? Is it like a disgraced warrior or, or a separate warrior from the pack? Well, we don't we don't use the term disgrace. We'll just say that our handlers are no longer with us and we are kind of free roaming. Gotcha. I've been off the reservation since 2001. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll just say uh, my handler is no longer with us. And um, when they take me out, they'll take me out. I don't give a shit. But my point is to you is... Um, Go back and watch the movie Ronan with Robert De Niro because they show you the chase scene in the tunnel during the time when Di was still having her funeral. Mm. That's all I'll say. Mm. <laughs> you so, know, what, so what? So what? What would? That what, what? What do you think that Diana would say about the black girl that the princess? Oh, her dumbass would have a real fucking comment. <sighs> um. The one thing I give Chris, Chris's die credit for, she was involved in an organization that was going out and helping people who were the victims of mines. In other words, we, when I say we, the U.S., yeah, Great Britain, mines. we've wreaked havoc all over the world. But nobody talks about all the civilians who still continue to suffer from walking through their fields, walking in the mountains and losing an arm or a leg to oh. a landmine. So I knew they were going to take her out because when she became actively involved in that organization, she became a threat to the power. But worse, when she got pregnant for a Muslim, it's time for her to go. Mm. <laughs> wow, not right, right. Uh huh. Oh, that's crazy. And for you folks who watch Scandal, I think it was season four, it might be season five, but they show you them killing Diane. They changed the whole thing around to make her look like a white woman and. DC, dying in the tunnels, but they were talking about Princess Di. Mm. This thing yeah, is well. so fucking deep. This is... And the royal, by the way, you should know the royal family is monitoring your show. Mm. Hey, I'm, just, I'm just telling you how it is. I'm just laying it out there. Now, hopefully we get some more subscribers. Well, God save the queen. <laughs> I know, but see, did you notice how, pre how President Obama just talked to <clears> one of the... Oh, yeah, Prince he was guys. over there in England, and yeah, he was, or no, they came over here and they interviewed him, that boy. The, you want to uh, talk about Obama? Let me tell you about Obama. When John F. Kennedy was first elected, the first place he went was to the Brandenburg Gate. Do you know where that's located? Sounds like Germany. When Obama was elected, guess where the first place he went to? Where? Germany. Brandenburg Gate. Kennedy was called Camelot. What was Obama called? The Black Camelot. There you go, brother. I'm not going to take credit for it, but God knows I did so many radio shows to hope to stop from him being assassinated on 22 November 2013 because that was the 50th anniversary of Kennedy's assassination. And what I will say to you is don't think they didn't try. Look at his gray hair. You see him in his gray hair? Yes. He's less than 20 years. No, he got old so anyway, quick. I know we're running out of time, but I'll just say this, man. Um, I'm going to 
comes to the queen, I gotta be careful with the queen. But <laughs> queen owns a queen owns a lot of property here in the U.S. And I'm from Charleston. You guys earlier talked about uh, how old was Jesus Christ? Thirty-three. Look on the map and see where Charleston's located. <laughs> is it the thirty-third parallel? Probably. There it is, and guess where the headquarters is for the Scottish Rite Tree right now? Oh God, dude. I wish I was making this up. So let's before we end here, let's go back to Vegas. So you got a shooter. What floor was he on? The, oh, stop! Thirty. Goddamn. Thirty. Yeah. Oh, he fuck. Thirty second floor. Who got released from prison that day? OJ Simpson. OJ Simpson. What's his jersey number? Stop. Thirty two. Thirty two. Oh, when, when Nicole and Ron killed. They were killed on June 12, 1994. Add those numbers up. What number do you think you come up with? Oh. No, just stop, Mark. So what's the name, well, Rob Goldman? The, the Civil War is already going on, and you guys don't even realize it. You know what, Mark? Dick Gregory's because right. Somebody's going to come and grab you. Rob the Gold? Civil War in the past was the Scottish right versus the York right. And the war is going on, brother. Rob Goldman, he's from Missouri. He's from a town called Valley Park, Missouri. <laughs> no, this guy, man. I'm the guy, he, hey, this I'm guy, the guy who refused to testify in that trial. You didn't know that either. This guy, dude, that we talk to now is truly a universal I saw The universe is allowing this to happen. I saw all the autopsy photographs, Marsha Clark and Chris Darden tried to bring me in. I refused. By the way, you know Chris Darden, you know, the Uncle Tom in that trial? Yep. Yeah. Read his book. He tells you how when he was in college, he used to run through the parking lots of shopping malls, knock white women down and steal their purses and run away because he was a member of the San Jose track team. That's why they brought him in. If they wanted to take him down, they could take him down. <laughs> this is just yeah. die fucking bottle, dude. This is like a wow. bad fucking horror story, dude. Not me. I love man, it. I don't know, man. You guys are using too much profanity, and I think you're running out of time because you're <laughs> 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 It's the it's the beverage I'm consuming. That's <laughs> that's why my whistle. So what, hey, so seriously, on a serious note, brother, because I'm gonna go. Okay. But before I go, I just want you to know I'm gonna send you an email, and I will send you all the Facebook sites where I share information. I share history, not his story. Take advantage of it while you can, because I know my time's number, but I don't give a damn. Well, well please, Mark. Before your time's <laughs> up, man, I just want to put this out here for all the world. You're always welcome to come on the show. You got my number. You know, we we'll stay in contact. But you're always welcome to come on this show. All right, brother. Well, now I got to go because there's some white women that are happy I hope they're waiting for me. Bye. <laughs> All right, brother. Mark from Anaheim, everybody. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you, sir. Oh, that was an awesome show, dude. That was epic. I mean, Man, he, was, he, was, he was on it. I mean, he was on point. He you know was what I'm saying? Yeah. When we bring people on, this is a caliber of people this is we bring what, on. Well, we, well, a preview of what 2018. Yes, 2018, baby. You know? We're going uh, to the top like a cream of the crop. Man. For right. real. That yeah. just, that just boosts the level of this show. Oh, it's out the roof. I mean, all this these past few days, all I did was research John Burr Society and some other shit. I got to delve into this Knights of Malta thing. I didn't do Next show, anything because I, be yeah. I didn't. I didn't do anything because I knew it was going to be a, a a nice ride on the school yeah. bus. So yeah. yeah, I mean, it was like the level of quiet that was over, man. When he was talking, we were as quiet as a mother. But sometimes Everybody, you got to be quiet because you know? when we, you we, got we, an authority that actually has right. the fucking knowledge, he's been there, man. Right. It was obviously right from the beginning. Right you know? from the beginning, yeah. he knew yeah. what was up. Yeah. You know, yeah. and he bared with us. Yeah. I was just so happy with his he patience. Man. Oh, he oh was, God, he, yeah. He, he was might. talking. The, 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 he was some real shit. The good yeah. thing to talk that I take from the whole thing is seeds have been planted. Yes. You know, so I... Yeah. I, and not GMO seeds. No. These seeds will keep on coming back. It may not just... It may not be just... Him, look, him look. that's watched. Shit, we, we being watched, too. Yeah, of course. But it's all good. It comes with the territory... You got anything else to say, man? I'm I'm kind of speechless for New Year's, but this is what we got to bring to the man, people. That's what I'm saying. Happy so, New Year. You March know, that's only a, Thank you so much. That's sir. only a beginning of what we're going to be doing. That's what you know. You know. Mm -hmm. 
the other morning show. I don't know what he's doing. Ask him if he's good or is he taking a piss, bro. All right, True Power Man taking a piss. We'll keep it going until he comes back. But you know, man, that that brother is he was he was on point, man. Like everything. Every second, every I, breath. Hopefully people will watch the show again. I probably will. Because, I mean, know. basically that, you know, he was he was basically pointing out, like we were talking before the show, of there is a civil war that's going to happen, you know what I'm saying, and a world war. Right. You know, and it's showing the signs of where we are heading. But he's basically also saying, too, I mean, we're going to die anyway, but it's it's best to have the knowledge at least not fighting. Mm-hmm. Then just let them come slaughter you. Right. You know, the ones that are just going to get slaughtered, they might live a little longer. You know, we might die a few days before them. Mm-hmm. You know? Right. You know, so, I mean, yeah, it's, it's crazy, but uh, I'm going to go back and I got to go back and watch the film. I got to go back and watch the film. True Power of Mind is bad. You got anything else to say? No, all I want to say is I will be reaching out to Claire McCaskill and Mel and Ke- uh, Megan Kelly. Uh, to try to reach out to these two ladies, you know, try to get one of them on the show. Mm-hmm. Uh, I want to say that, uh, you know, tonight, uh, the information that you got here is information you truly will not hear anywhere else. So, Raw, live, and uncut. Yes, you know, he was able to speak the way he wanted to speak, say whatever he wanted to say. We had no commercial breaks. There was no interruption of thought. I wonder I wonder if we gonna get if they going to put up one of those warning signs like they did. Uh, oh, God. The, uh, the black authority when he when he went over that uh, FBI report about the uh, the black the black thing. I wonder if they going to do this show like that. I hope not. I mean. I hope they do it. That means know, we learn. Yeah. This show. Show here be tonight has been a culmination of about three months of hard work between me and you and others. You know, and Motor Cobra coming in, you know. Thank you. And uh, I hope that, you know, we so make this triumphant that we got going on now go the distance. You know, I, I hope that Mark for Anaheim can pencil in, you know, lay on down the line, come in. But you got some new people coming in. That's right. You know, yep. You're more than welcome to bring in people, you know. Yes, sir. And once I get, uh, you know, my little camera that's going to be here, there's going to be side reports. We're going to be taking the show on the road here. That's right. You know, we're going to be right. doing Twitch. this show with a different backdrop, but the Tupac Turkey and Obama's coming with us. Along yeah, with the CD point the two. Camera. Definitely, definitely the show. Um, y'all going to definitely have a lot of subscribers and a lot of people really, really talking because... This was some deep stuff that this that this brother this, was talking this brother about. Brought, he brought the ham. Yes, this he man did. here is the new Dick Gregory. Yes, all right. I agree. You know, uh, Dick Gregory has has gone. You know, the universe took him on. Rest in peace, brother Rest Dick peace, Gregory. Dick. But uh, Mark for Anaheim is the man. Mm-hmm. You know, what you I'm might not want to be the man, but sometimes the people choose. Yeah, yeah they, they do. We yeah. do. You know, yeah. and. You know, he asked me in our conversation as he he talked to us about, you know, who do you consider black leaders? You know, he asked me that question. I told him, man, all the black leaders I trust. No, he asked, what black leaders now do you trust? And I responded, the black leaders I trust are already dead. All right. These bozos we have run around. You said something about Dr. Uh, Umar Umar. Johnson, you know, and all these clowns, you know, running around. Not saying that you're a client of Umar Johnson. I've seen some of your videos. I know what you're about. You yeah, know. we don't want your 12 brother, followers attacking yeah. us. Uh, brother Polite, uh, the black Hebrew Israelites, you know. There's a lot of people out there doing their thing, man. But I'm saying, listen, the thing that we are up against, what Mr. Anaheim was telling us, man, it's not a black, it's not a white thing. No. It's a fucking do you want to survive or do you want to die thing. I suggest all you poor rednecks, all you poor niggas, all you poor spigs, Jews, kikes, whatever the fuck you want to go by, you guys better start banding together. Right. Yeah. Or else you're all going to hang separate. And don't look at it as, as being a, a, a racial thing either, man, because like... like it's a survival uh, thing. It's a survival. Because at the end of the day, man, we all have kids. Mm-hmm. We all have women we love. We don't want them dying and burning. We don't want to die. I don't want to fuck with that man's shit and he shouldn't want to fuck with mine. You know what I'm saying? Like like I said before, if you're too dumb to govern yourself, how the fuck can you elect someone to govern the situation? That's why we're in the situation we're in. Exactly. And I'm still going to go home and sharpen my other pitchforks, too. <laughs> <laughs> Even if the drones are watching. Yep. Yeah. I know the drones watching. I ain't stupid. I'm world, world. The drones going to watch me all the way home. 
Yeah. But you know what? At the end of the day, and like one of the father's fathers said, he said, give me liberty or give me what? Give me death. death. All right? I want Black liberty. folks, you should not say, give me liberty or give me education. Give me liberty or give me government cheese. Give me liberty or give me some Section 8. Mm -hmm. Motherfucker, give me liberty or give me death. Because I'm not going to live in your bullshit no more. I'm going to have the dignity of a human being. And I'm going to carry myself accordingly. All right. Mm -hmm. And all, that's all, all I'm going to say. All I'm going to say is, tonight I closed the book. 2017 has been good. Mm -hmm. It's been a wrap. Two, what, two more days? Two more days and it's over. 2017, uh, baby. But I'm going to chill you out. got it, bro. Yes, sir. This is yes, the sir. New Year's show. This is just the beginning. A lot of great things to come this next 12 months, folks. And all I'm going to say is that now I feel even better after what old boy said. I feel even better when I say when millions of people stand up and fight back, only then will we have justice fall. I'm yeah. Don Bag Doily. I'm True Powers Mind. I'm Cobra Mortal. Like I said, like my brothers here said, man, uh, I feel like that this is the time where they, where they get ready to hit us. It's winter time here. They get ready to... They're cutting off our supplies. If you black, if you brown, it's very, very important to know what's going on. All poor and white too. That's not and poor and white. Yeah, you, you know, know what I'm they saying? suffer. They the get silence. killed just you know, like I, us. I feel like sometimes I gotta speak for them because they like to go suffer in silence. Yeah, know? don't mm -hmm. talk about talking Ricky being killed by them cops. Yeah, yeah, or. or or, 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 or Mary Beth over there, her social security's getting cut and she's mm. going to be in some trouble. Right. Mm. I start speaking for y'all too, man. Yeah. Because, at the end of the because day, we have love for you as well. It's still about You're humanity. Human being. It you is. Know. You're a human being. being. You know, y'all might not say nothing, but I speak with you, you know. How many triggers I've seen? Oh, God. Through this motherfucking small mud, back, mud hole of a town. You know. Right. And I wish Mark would have gotten into the heroin epidemic. The heroin epidemic. God, that's another two hours worth of show right that there. That is because we're in Afghanistan. The Sorry. Taliban was removing that bullshit. But nope, nope. You want those oxycodones, don't you? You want them Percocets, don't you? You like that Molly. That's what that shit's all I ain't about. They had shit say, to do. But 2018... It's a wrap. 2018, you know, 2017, like, we'll see y'all, man. That's 18. Right. Like, thank you for the show. Thank you for the support. Also, there were three people. We had three donations this week. Yeah. The, we had a $50. We had $25. And what about the uh, the word to send out the donations to? Yes. P.O. Box 133, DeSoto, Missouri. 63020. Because it's... In 2018, we're going to crush the buildings like Snoop did in the dog pound video. And, we, and for some of you guys that don't want to write and stick a stamp, we're going to get a Patreon account. Yeah. We're going to get a PayPal account. You can send money directly to us. And, you know, unlike other people, we ain't going to sit here and lie. I ain't trying to make no fucking punk bitch ass school or some stupid ass fucking center. We're going to use this for procreation of fucking other things that's going to come out. You'll see what the fuck we do with the money. You know, Gary from Allentown. He started that shit off. He started it off right here. Right here. Shout out to Gary, Allentown. And this is the least thing this dude needs is another fucking knife. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you know, and I never brought my real artillery, you know, because I like to no, stay. I no. love medieval weapons. I want to continue to do the show. Yeah, exactly. Let's yeah. shut our shits down. Oh, look, no, whoa, whoa, no, we, no. We don't get to walk around with our ARs. Right. Uh, no. You know, we got to keep our shit concealed. Little but we got them. We got them. Man, 2017, no we, we, we love y'all, man. It's been real. Thank you yeah, very much. It's been much. awesome. It's, this has been such a great time to be alive. You know, I mean, we got a lot of propaganda against us. You know, I mean, no one's calling us a super predator because that bitch ain't in the office. Right. But, you know, we we have a lot of Our work to do. called us, though. Oh, God. No. You know, <laughs> I know I got a lot of research to do myself Boy, now. Yes. Uh, Knights of Malta, you know, the next show, I will be up on game. You know, when we were talking there, and he was saying, well, where did Gorbachev and Reagan, you know, sign that agreement? The only reason I remember Knights of or the, um, Malta is because I was alive when that went down. Mm -hmm. And I remember that from watching the news back in the day. Right. And when he said that, all these dominoes just fucking hit my head. I'm like, oh, shit. I remember. So who I the fuck are the Knights of Malta? What the fuck are they really about? When were they fucking founded and by what ideology were they founded in? Mm -hmm. I will have those answers next show. Yes, sir. All right. Next show will be 2018. Yes. 2018. 
I'm gonna just say it's the year of the ass whooping because a lot of people finna get some ass whoopings. <laughs> and if yeah, you're, you know, you're out here, I got a whole fucking list. <laughs> you want to be a, uh, I you have a whole go. fucking list. <laughs> <laughs> some of you mofos, some of you, I'm telling you, I, this is a one. I got a list. It's some motherfuckers finna get some ass kickings, Woo. and you know who you are. And you know, you gotta say your name. Beware, I'm not, mercy I'm not ain't say your no. Name. But when that foot go up in that ass and motherfuckers <laughs> asking you why, you know why? I'll let you tell them why you walking around with a foot in your ass because it's coming. Right. I'm out. I ain't got nothing else to say. I'm done too, man. This has been the other morning show. I'm Thank you all for watching. Going. Yeah, Copa Mortal. Yes, sir. Let's wow, get it. Wow, this has been a, a, a show, man. Yes. This has been a motherfucking 